Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the glass bauble necklace. This is a pretty glass necklace that you can crochet very easily. And for this project, you'll need some embroidery floss. I used DMC, just regular embroidery floss, and I chose kind of a soft silvery color to kind of make it look like metal. This is a uh, 415 color if you were wanting to match what I have here. You'll also need some beads. I chose glass because um, they come in a lot of really pretty uh, shapes and textures and colors. And if you go to the craft store, you can find uh, kind of bead collections or you can stick to all one type of bead, but there's a lot of really gorgeous beads at the craft store. And if you can't narrow it down to one, just uh, make more necklaces. So you'll also need some kind of a clasp. Now everybody has their own preference of clasp. I really like toggle clasps because they're easy to put on and they're kind of stylish looking. And then you'll need um, a needle. This is an embroidery needle. This is what you would normally use for uh, cross stitching. So if you go to the cross stitch aisle, uh, this is a lot thinner than a normal tapestry needle that we would use for knitting and crocheting. But if you go to the cross stitch aisle, um, this one is made also by um, DMC, so you can look for the packaging. You'll need some small scissors, some embroidery uh, scissors, and I'm using a 2.75 millimeter C crochet hook. So let's get started. Before we begin crocheting, we're going to need to put our beads on the embroidery floss first. So what I like to do is just pull out a little bit, not a whole lot. This is about, oh, I don't know, three feet or so. That's plenty. And because the plies sometimes uh, come untwisted, you want to just give that a fresh cut with your scissors. And then you can thread your needle. Now this needle has a very small eye, so you'll need to just get that in there the best you can. And it, it goes in there pretty easily. If you need help, you can use a needle threader. And I have a post on Fiberflux of how to use one of those tools as well. So let's talk about the beads for a minute. I have some glass beads here, and um, when you buy beads, sometimes when you buy these glass beads, they can be dirty when you buy them. Um, they feel like they almost have a coating on them, and that's either from the manufacturing process or um, them sitting in a container together kind of rubbing up against one another. So if your beads aren't super shiny or feel like they have a coating on them, you can put them in a household colander and just take them to your sink and give them a nice rinse. Um, or, you know, with maybe just a tiny bit of soap and or just clear water rinse. Now, if your beads have any kind of paint or patina on them or enamel or anything like that, you want to avoid doing this. But for regular glass beads or unpainted or unfinished plastic beads, you can give them a rinse, um, just as a side note. So I made my necklace have a really random bead pattern. So I'm just going to strand these kind of randomly. We're going to do one of the strands together, and then we're going to learn how to join all the strands together and attach them to our toggle clasp at the end. So I'm just going to strand mine, just run them in there. Just totally random pattern, and I want my beads to be very heavy. I want lots and lots of beads on my necklace. You can make your beads uh, spaced apart. It's totally a design choice of yours, whatever you want to do. Mine seem to want to roll all over the place. So I'm just stranding a bunch of these on here. We're going to do one of the strands together. And again, I gave my beads, like I said, a little bath in the colander. Um, and they, they shined up really nicely, okay? So I got a few beads on here. So we can take our little needle off now. This is a tinier needle than I'm normally used to working with. So all we're doing is making chains. So you wanna kind of push your beads back as far as you can. Not too, too far, but, cause you're gonna be pulling them back up when we crochet. So we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. 
To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, and bring up a loop. Now, when you make chains with this silver embroidery floss, it's going to kind of look like metal necklace chains. So if you want to use a larger hook than the C hook that I'm using here, you can do that and it'll make your chains look a lot loopier. If you don't like that loopy kind of chain effect, just go down to a smaller hook than the C. But this, after a little bit of experimentation, was my favorite size to use with this embroidery floss for this particular project. Okay, so we're just gonna make a few chains. I'm gonna put three chains in between each bead. You can put 10 chains, you can put one chain, it's totally up to you. Um, this is a very kind of artsy looking necklace and it has no real uh, spacing or counting. We're just gonna get a lot of glass beads and make lots of strands and then just tie them together, okay? So I'm just gonna do three chains. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, and three. So let me show you how to place the first bead. We have our beads way back here. So we're gonna just slide, I have a little tiny bead to start. We're just gonna slide this first bead all the way up. And this is why I was saying earlier, you don't wanna push them back too far because you're gonna be sliding these all the way back up. So you're gonna take your bead and you're gonna slide it up against your crochet hook as far as it'll go and then just work a chain just like that. Now our bead has been incorporated onto our necklace. So three more chains. Again, any number of chains you like. I thought that gave a nice look there. Slide the next bead up all the way as far as it will go up against your crochet hook and just work another chain. So this is basically how we're going to be doing it the whole time, okay? Next, we'll do three chains one, two, three. Take our next bead. And when you use these, you can buy these beads in multi-packs. When you buy these multi-packs, it makes for a really interesting project because every bead has its own little uh, personality. Okay, so we've incorporated the bead. Now this is a little bit of a bigger bead, but we're gonna do it the same exact way. So just pull it through that chain. Same way, okay? So you kind of see how that looks. So we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. Okay? Slide the next bead up. Press it up against that, that hook. You don't want it to be too loose and floppy. Okay, and then work a chain. Just like that. Then one, two, and three. Let's find our next bead. See, each one of these beads is different and unique, okay? Finish our chain. So we're just gonna keep doing that until we run out of beads. One, two, three. And you'll determine, too, how long you want your necklace to be. Do you want this to be a very long necklace down to maybe the waistline? Do you want this to be a shorter necklace? I'm gonna make mine kind of rest on the collarbone. So what you can do is kind of take your tape measure and measure first um, before you begin. Okay, so we're going to, we did our three chains, then we have another bead to incorporate. So one, two, three. Slide the next bead up. One, two, three. Next bead, work it in with the chain and one, two, three. So let's see what we have so far. It looks very interesting, lots of texture, kind of artsy looking. So we're just gonna keep going this manner until our strand is as long as we want it to be. Now I did not put a whole lot of beads on here, but what I would recommend, if you're not sure how many beads you wanna use or how long you want it to be, if you're just kind of eyeballing it, I would recommend putting a lot more beads than you think you'll use because once you fasten off and cut the yarn, you can always pull the rest of the beads off. So we probably have enough one here to make a bracelet, but if you were doing this for a necklace, you would want to put a lot more. So I would put a lot more beads than you think you'll use and um, 
you can always pull them off or you can just keep them uh, strung on your embroidery floss for the next strand that you'll make. So just keep going this manner and then we will rejoin in just a moment and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've come to the end and I'm out of beads on my strand. Now, I wanna show you a little tip. If you get to the end of your strand and it's a little bit shorter than you want it to be, but you're out of beads, so what would you do? So normally I would just, before I figured this tip out, I would just, uh, keep crocheting and just make a long chain you can do that because this part will be at the nape of your neck and you won't be able to see it that well anyway as you would in the front you could just make this final chain a little bit longer but if you want to add more beads on there you can do that too so just cut I'm cutting about oh I don't know 24 inches or so and then what you can do so we've cut the yarn we're not going to fasten off yet just thread your embroidery needle again. Now my project is still on the hook. We've just left it alone for a minute. So I'm gonna string four more beads onto my project. You can make these, you can string 10 more beads, it's totally up to you. I'm just gonna string four more beads, just as an example. And then remove your, your needle. And then you're ready to add some more beads. So you want to be careful because this end is just kind of hanging out. The beads can fall off of it. Um, so you're going to just slide your bead up and just keep going the way you've been going. So just finish that chain. We slid the bead up to the hook and finish that chain, just like we've been doing for the whole uh, necklace. Okay, so just work your chains. I'm just putting a few in between here. And then you're ready to slide the next bead up. Now, this end is still open, so as long as you have enough embroidery floss to keep chaining, um, you can keep adding beads, more and more beads if you need to. Okay, so let's work that next bead in there. And that's how you add uh, beads to your project. You would just cut the yarn and add them that way. So we're just gonna put a few chains in there, slide the next bead up. the chain. I'm putting a few extra in here than I did before. But that adds to the kind of random texture that we're after. Okay, last bead that we have on here. Okay, so then you can kind of hold it up and I would recommend um, putting this around your neck as you go along to just kind of see if it's the length you want it to be. If it's still too short, simply set your hook down, grab your needle, thread some more beads on there, keep working some chains until you're out of um, the thread. So to finish the necklace, uh, we're just gonna keep uh, making more and more strands and I'm gonna show you how to fasten this off in just a moment. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I went ahead and held mine up to see if it was the length that I wanted it to be and it was. So again, mine is going to be kind of um, uh, at sitting at the collarbone. You can make yours waist length. You can make yours sort of a choker style. Um, mine came out to be, let's see, about 16, 17 inches. So again, measure your own personal preference, and then once you're finished, you can take your hook, fasten it off, and when you fasten off, make sure you have a tail on both sides. This tail is plenty long, this one's a little long, but we can trim that later. But make sure you have a tail, because we're going to be tying all of these strands. When we have more strands, we're going to be tying all of these strands together and later adding them to our toggle clasp okay so that's how you make one of the strands now you can leave your necklace just like this and just wear it with one strand or you can add multiple strands like we will be doing so I went ahead and finished mine and I wanted to do three strands you can do two strands one strand 20 strands however many strands you want to do 
but I really like the thickness that these three strands gave me. So what you'll want to do next is to take your three strands and just kind of line them up. These are roughly the same length. I just kind of eyeballed mine as I was making them. I didn't measure them or anything, but you can measure yours if you want. And just grab them at both ends. This part can be a little tricky. So there's a lot of strands here. But what you're going to do is just kind of twist them. Just kind of twist the strands so that everything stays put, unless you want kind of a tiered necklace. But I want mine to be really jumbly and kind of textured like this. So what you're going to do is just tie your necklace at one end, kind of the same way when you're making a slip knot when you're crocheting. So just tie them in the knot at one end, just like that. And then come down to the other end and tie a knot at this end. If you have a strand that's a little shorter, that's okay. Just make sure all three or however many strands you have are incorporated into the knots, okay? So just get that right through there. And it might be a little tricky if you're working with multiple strands. There we go. So just get that right through. If you need to borrow your hook, that certainly helps too. Just pull that right through. Okay, so you can get your knot nice and tight. And I have a bead in my knot, that's totally fine. No big deal. Okay, so then you're gonna take your, your toggle. And my hole to my toggle is, is kind of small. So I'm only gonna run one of the strands in there and we're gonna trim everything at the end when we're finished. So just thread that in the best you can. Try to get all the plies in there. And then I'm going to show you a little trick at the end for keeping your knot together. So you can tie that, thread that onto one of them, and then take one of the other strands and just tie that right on. Just like that. So here I have another strand here. It's very strandy. I'm going to trim all these strands at the end though to get it nice and neat looking. Okay, so just tie that really tightly on there with a knot. I'm going to do three knots just to make sure everything is nice and secure. Okay, then you can take your scissors. And we're just going to trim everything. And again, I'm going to show you a little trick at the end. So just trim everything nice and close. And then we're going to repeat the same for our other half of the toggle on the other side. Okay, so I went ahead and tied the other half of our toggle on. And then I'm just going to trim all these little ends that I have left. So I wanted to mention a very important tip. When you're using this embroidery floss and you're making jewelry and tying knots and things like that, you'll want to make sure your knot stays in place. Embroidery floss is very satiny and slippery. So I have here just some clear nail polish and you can just take a tiny little dab of that and just dab it onto your knot. And then once that dries, make sure you let it dry completely before you wear it. So once that dries, your knot will stay in place. And as you wear it and the threads move around, you can uh, from time to time touch it up. But go ahead and do that to both uh, sides. I didn't do the other side here. Make sure you do both sides and just kind of like paint the knot. And you want to use clear. You don't want to like put bright red on here. It'll stick out. But just um, make sure you get some of that on each knot, and that will keep your knot from slipping around. Okay, and then when you're finished, I'm going to do this carefully without getting nail polish on myself here. So then your necklace will be complete, and it looks very beautiful and very minimal supplies. This embroidery floss is very inexpensive, and it makes a nice expensive looking necklace you have some beautiful glass beads or really any beads you want and this is usually one little skein of this is under a dollar um, you know just cents you'll pay for this so that's how you crochet and put together the glass bubble necklace I hope you enjoyed making this project and be sure and click on the subscribe button to get all the latest fiber flux video updates thanks again